Hey guys, Ron Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Today we're doing a really hands-on video of my entire signal path. We're gonna start at the microphones in the live room. I'm gonna show you all the connections down the line. This was inspired by my friend Justin Collars. He's been on the show before to demonstrate the Earthworks um, SR314. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a cool one. So here we are at the very beginning of our signal path. We have various microphones plugged into guitar amps, drums, vocal mics, whatever it may be. Usually it'll start with some sort of instrument with a microphone going into a preamp. Now this of course is not, you know, synthesizers, uh, DI boxes from bass guitar. I mean, we can talk about that as well, but this is more microphone territory here. And in order to get our microphones into preamps that are across, uh, you know, in the other room, we have a uh, audio snake. It functions as a extension cable. So instead of having to run a bunch of XORs uh, through the doorway, uh, I made a audio snake here. It is a 12 channel Mogami uh, audio snake. And then it terminates. I just, uh, you know, I cut the wire, uh, fed it into the box and then picked out my connectors, and it took a few hours to make. But overall, it was a, a really good project that really saved me a lot of headache. You know, this audio snake has been rock solid because I took my time doing it. It's really not too hard to solder, uh, you know, small connectors like that. You just gotta take your time. But this is where the microphone signals enter the uh, the signal, uh, the, the path towards the patch bay. Now I can see here that there's a inline pad uh, there on the left, so that red cable goes into a pad. It's marked with yellow tape. That is a 20 dB pad that I uh, used uh, to pad down the signal of a microphone coming from that bass guitar cab. So we actually could follow that bass guitar cab signal all the way through a signal path, if you'd like. We have our microphone on the bass cab. It comes all the way down. Now, why did I use a pad on the mic cable? Well, you know, I, th I think that it's just because it's too much gain in general. Uh, there's no mic on the actual, I'm sorry, there's no pad on the actual mic. So in this case, I just put it right in the mic cable. You can buy these inline pads. You can make them yourself if you'd like. Um, if you buy them, you know, they're maybe $35, $40. But they solve an issue when a microphone doesn't have a built-in pad. Now, a mic pre has a pad, and, and that also can work. You could try it. If you don't like the sound, you know, try getting an inline pad. See if that helps. One idea that is sometimes used is when you have a desktop preamp, like the uh, the Avalon M5, or uh, Neve makes a desktop preamp. It's like a, a box that just sits, you know, on t a tabletop uh, type format. Well, that actually could be used alongside this audio snake here. So you actually could have the preamp in the room right next to the microphone. The advantage of that is that instead of running down this wire and going all the way through the other room, we actually can amplify the signal very, very close to the mic. We could send line level down our audio snake, but you know, all the preamps are at the desk. And of course we want to be able to adjust the gain uh, as, as needed uh, based on what we can see on the meters. So everything in here is microphone level signals. So from here, it goes right into the patch bay. So we can go there next to see where this leads us. Okay, here we have the back of the patch bay. Our audio snake that I created, um, it actually didn't have enough length on it. So I had to buy an extension snake. So uh, these uh, snakes here, um, they're actually just a, a kind of a, a baseline quality Hosa snake, which I'm sure I'll upgrade later as I have the funds. But for right now, it actually makes a really easy to uh, set up type system with all the different color coding. It's absolutely wonderful to be able to visually see what's going on. 
So this is our extension snake because our audio snake wasn't long enough. So this gave us another 15 feet. So this is actually an XOR to quarter inch right here. So we have channel one, channel two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then it starts over. One, two, three, four, and that's our uh, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now the, uh, the green, blue, purple, gray, which is over here, these are just extra channels, um, which, uh, I don't know, I just kind of, I patch into those just kind of uh, behind the desk there to use up the rest of this extension snake here. But the main uh, feeds to the patch bay are one through 12 right through here. There's a few different configurations that you can set up a patch bay with. This here is actually just a through setup. So um, the signals do not route to the bottom row. In a half normal system, the signals that are coming in from uh, snake channel one go automatically to preamp channel one. But that's not the case here because I want my microphones connecting to the preamps. I want it to visually be very easy to see with cables on the front of the patch bay. I just wanted to visually see what's going on and just be, you know, as easy and simple uh, as possible. You know, there's phantom power going through here. Uh, you know, I have ribbon mics. I just want to visually see what's going on. So I have to actually patch all the mics coming from the snake into the preamps that are on the second row here. Then on the very next patch bay, we have the preamp outputs right here. So the output of the snake into the input of the pre, out over in, then the output of the pre, and then there's nothing down here. Now, if I wanted to, I could have my digital inputs, the input of my Motu interface, right here in this bottom row. And I could actually have it half normal so that these um, outputs of the preamp, they automatically get routed into uh, digital input one, two, three, four, five, etc. Now, I don't have that set up because I have it set up for mixing, and I'll get to that in a moment. But this is the first half of the patch bay. This is kind of the recording side of things. We have the snake channels, the preamp inputs, and preamp outputs. Okay, so moving down from our recording end, we have a little gap, and then we have some more patch bays. And I intentionally put this gap in there just so visually I can kind of tell what's going on and kind of the difference between the two workflows. But here, the very top row, instead of the snake out like we do the recording side, this main first channel here is an output, out over in, but it's a digital output. So the interface out, interface out uh, one, two, those are my monitors, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have the digital outs, very top row. Then the very next row is my uh, outboard gear inputs. Then the row under that is outboard uh, outputs coming back in. And then the row under that, it's hard to see, that's my digital input right there. So without doing much at all, I can go out of uh, a digital out to my outboard, back from my outboard, and then to my digital input. One, two, three, four, in that order. Okay, here we are at the front of the patch bay. We have the from snake one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Then we have our preamp input, the very next row down. Then we have our preamp out. And then if we were set up for recording, we would have the digital input plugged in here. But we don't, this is just blank. So in order to actually record an input, I have to do a couple of things. This here is all just through, okay? So nothing gets routed without a cable. So we wanna go 
Uh, let's see here. We had our, our microphone plugged in. Uh, the base cabin snake one. Now I'm actually using this pre to talk into right now with my lapel mic. And this is connected from over here. And this happens all the time. So what we're going to do is, uh, you know, instead of visually going straight down with it, we can just step over one and there we go. So this is going into preamp two the uh, VP25, and then the 25 out is right be uh, below it. And because this patch bay, even though it can be half normaled to automatically route signals, we have to patch it because there's nothing in that bottom row. So now what we do is we take our orange cable, we go to our digital input, and this is DAW in 2. There's DAW in 3, 4, 5. This is DAW in 2. And we patch that in, and that will basically uh, run our base amp microphone that happens to be in uh, Snake 1. We can sidestep it over and put in uh, input, or er, preamp 2, because that's available preamp. Out of preamp two, we have to manually patch it in to our digital input, whatever we'd like. And then from here, we're going to open up a new track and we're going to um, specify the digital input. Here we have a uh, input of one, but in our case, it would be input two. And once we have that, we can record arm, we can record and now we're recording our bass guitar microphone, which originally came out of that red cable from the bass cab. So on the recording side of the patch bay, again, there's a little space between uh, the patch bays for different workflows. Uh, this is set up more of a mixing style patch bay so that we have the DAW output and it is half normaled to immediately pass signal into the jack beneath it. So without having to use a cable, DAW out is going into outboard uh, 4. This is the input here for that outboard 4. This is the out of that outboard 4. This is the input for our DAW. So we go out of 4 into 4. Very, very quickly without having to patch anything. We can patch in compressor number 4, for instance, with a click of a button. Now, what's really interesting about when you have the patch bay set up to be half normaled like this is that this signal here, this blue cable, is actually a split because the signal coming out of DAW out 12 is still going into compressor 12 input right here. And then the compressor out comes out here, then it goes into DAW input 12 here. But because this is a split, it also goes into, you know, compressor or EQ number 13. And then 13 out. This is half normal to go here without any cables. So we're actually going to see with a single cable, we'll see, we'll send something out of 12 and we'll get two back, one in 12 and one in 13. This is a great way to, uh, you know, process something two different ways at once or um, you know if this were like a preamp output we could record the uh, the dry preamp we could record a compressor um, version of that vocal performance uh, this is a great way to split signals very quickly just by using a single cable and just sidestepping to an adjacent channel of course if we didn't want two copies coming in then what we can do is we can just occupy that lower jack of channel 12. And even if this were just a, a blank plug, this would stop the signal from going into input 12. It's still going to 13, but as of now, nothing's going into 12. Now, if we wanted to, we could say, you know what, we really, we want to use compressor 12, but uh, to get there, we'll go out of uh, 13. Okay. <laughs> So now we just kind of swap channels. We're going out of 13 to go into 12. 
And now 12 will see whatever signal we just fed it into the bottom jack here. So that'll go in half normal into doll input 12. There we go. Or we could say, you know what? We want to fit, we want to feed uh, whatever we're doing out of 10 into compressor 12. A lot of times, I mean, this doesn't really make sense just saying, hey, let's just feed it out of 10. But, you know, sometimes I'll say, you know, I'm using, uh, you know, 13, 14 as a pair. So, uh, you know, I just need an available output and it's kind of a random output, but I just need a way to get out of the DAW. And in that case, I just use something that's available. And in this case, if I want to access comp compressor 12, I can do that. It's not an issue, even though this blue cable is already here. Totally cool. And I can access compressor or EQ number 12 here. And if I really am picky on how it gets back in the DAW, then I could take the output of that device and plug it into a similar matching, you know, in and out pair. So, you know, number three, for example, I can come out of three, go into here, and then I can go into input three for the DAW with my green cable here. But of course I could always just say, yeah, whatever. As it is now, this is uh, going into input 12, no cabling needed as long as that input 12 is available. That's already going there. Okay, so here is the uh, back of the uh, one of the outboard racks. So all of these colored cables, they're just XLR. Uh, some of them are male, some of them are female, depending on whether it's an in or output. So it's literally just XLR to quarter inch, XLR to quarter inch. In the back of those patch bays, they're all quarter inch. So yeah, it's just a matter of uh, getting to that quarter inch type uh, jack. And then from there, we can load everything. Uh, you know, we could patch anything that we want using a quarter inch uh, patch cable on the front of the patch bay. Here's another example of some uh, XOR cables to a quarter inch. So on this side, obviously, is XOR. We have a couple different XORs going into the Game Changer Audio Plasmas, one going into the Warm Audio uh, EQPA. And uh, yeah, just XOR to quarter inch, XOR to quarter inch. Same thing down here, XOR to quarter inch. The male connectors always feed signal. The female sig uh, XORs always receive signal. So these are gonna be male signals going in and female signals receiving signals coming out of the device. From here, it goes into the patch bay. So this, uh, this connector here, the input of the device, that would be on the bottom row of the patch bay. And then this here would go into the next patch bay down, which would be a top row of the patch bay. And then on that bottom row, right beneath this signal would be a digital input. Uh, bottom row of the patch bay and top row. And here we have some uh, quarter inch jacks. These are just uh, going in and out. This is a, a direct input quarter inch and then a direct channel out quarter inch. So this is just how I get in and out of this mixer to use basically four channels of EQ. So uh, quarter inch to quarter inch on this one going into the patch bay and a quarter inch to quarter inch snake on the channel outs right behind it there on, you know, five through eight. Uh, these cables here coming in, they're actually a Y cable that go to those compressors there. So on the tip, of the cable. It goes in the input, the white, and then on the red side, which is the other cable, is the return. So on a single jack over here, it's a send and receive. And this is how I plug in these compressors into the channel of the mixer on a single cable. Okay, so hopefully this gave a little bit of an insight on how I'm using the patch bays, how I'm using various connections here around the studio. And don't forget, I do have a course right now on mixing with outboard available at creativesoundlab.tv. It uses all these techniques, but it expands on them further with an entire guide on using patch bays and really how to hook it up 
I really go further into the flow of the patch base, and also just you get to see the workflow of using Outboard. So I really hope this video was helpful, especially to those of you that are just starting out. If I happen to miss anything, let me know in the comments below on different parts of the studio that you would like to see and the hookups and behind the scenes of how to set those things up. I'd love to know any gaps that you'd like to learn about. So yeah, I'll be hanging out in the comments below. Talk to you soon.